Yes. Why don't you go find some new horses? <laughs> for the... What are we gonna do for Kanye? Uh, I don't you know. know. You tell me. No, you tell me. What do we do? Well, previously on the Curse of Strong, Relearn. You are outside the walled city of Crest, trying to get in. You beseeched the burgomaster who refused you entrance because the safety of one man is not worth the safety of all of those inside and he could not trust you. You trying to get inside the city by any means possible tried climbing a tree and jumping over the wall. There you fell, the breath knocked out of you, gazing up at the sky until you saw a man with bright blonde hair and the features of a child in its purity. As he looked down on you, you later found this man to be the abbot of Saint, uh, the Abbey of Saint Markovia. He took you inside his abbey, fixed you up, patching you together with different pieces of animals, badgers, and uh, fish. You now have fish scales sewn into your face. But it only took, after he found the raised dead spell, the resurrection spell, within your coat pocket, and he was able to raise you from the dead. Meanwhile, we have Annaline, who found herself sealed up within a coffin filled with blood in some sort of ritual done by Strahd von Zarovich himself. You pulled yourself from that bloody coffin, exited the mausoleum, and then bathed yourself of that blood in a pool. Surrounded by snow and the mountains, you later learned that you were in Kresk. After an overwhelming sense of sorrow escaping you, you dredged yourself out of that pool and walked up to that abbey there where the bells were ringing. You thought maybe you'd find shelter, and inside you did but with less favorable folk, as they were all twisted and distorted with faces of animals and creatures all sewn together. You met the abbot, a strange, inhuman person who brought you to his friend who was very, very excited to meet you. There, when he opened the door, he showed you to a woman named Vasilka, a corpse without a face. You noped out of there very quickly. <laughs> Ran back. The abbot was very displeased, but he let you go. You found Relearn there in the front of the abbey, waiting out a storm. The two of you then received letters from Strahd von Zarovich that in two days' time, you were to meet him at Castle Ravenloft for dinner. Meanwhile, Amadeus... You were flying back from Yester Hill all the way to Argenbosfold, carrying the holy symbol of Ravenkind, which shone like a star, and with that, your wife Lenore, who was mutilated at Yester Hill. Her arm gone, she now takes the form of a raven without a wing and cannot fly. You return the seed to the Mardikov family at Argenbosfold. There in the burrows, they helped to soothe her pain, and you stayed with her overnight until the dowry was bought, brought to you by Adrian. He apologized for how he treated you, and he sent you on your way back to Velaki with Danica and her boys, Brahm and Bray, Irwin's children. You found yourself at the Blue Water Inn for some time before taking that dowry and then going to buy a house. While you were staying at the inn, however, you came across Van Richten, who had learned after killing and raising, uh, speaking with the dead, Vistani, he was able to discover that Tatiana had been reborn, the lost love of Strahd, and that was in fact your sister, who he had met earlier and thought maybe was some sort of bride of Strahd, a concubine. There, he then beseeched you 
to light a lantern when you were on your way to dinner at Castle Ravenloft. Not that much longer afterwards, you received another letter bidding that you come now. You have guard duty in the morning. After making a deal with Lady Wachter, you know that you have this one responsibility to make up for the shortcomings in your purse, but you now own a house, and that is where we left you. We're going to start inside Cress with Annalie and Relern. You find yourself walking there through the snow. The storm is past. It is near nightfall. You think you have maybe an hour or two at the most. As you come walking down these switchbacks, the cobblestones are slick with ice, and still snow drizzles, now a little bit wet from the sky. It sticks to your hair, and you have to wipe it from your brow when you come down into the city that's nestled amongst trees. After walking a moment along the path, you eventually see a man looking at you past a tree. I don't think I know you. What's your name? What's yours? Ulrich. When have you come to Kresk? Uh, just recently, actually. Um, friends of uh, the Burgomaster, you know? Uh, yes. Right. Well, uh, do you have a place to stay this night? Uh, we're actually leaving, so. Oh! You are? Yes. It's nearly nightfall you leave tonight. Mm-hmm. Yes. Very well. Uh, I'm just getting some wood now for festivities this evening. Huh? Festivities? Uh, yes, it's the festival of the White Sun. What is that? <clears throat> it's dinner mostly with friends and uh, strangers along the way. I thought perhaps the morning lord brought you to me, but if you're leaving, you're leaving. Yes, I'm afraid we do have to leave somewhere, so. Oh, very well. Very well. Thank you for the offer, though. Of course. Uh, safe travels. Thank you. He goes and kind of passes back, eyeing you. You can't tell if he's suspicious or something's a little off. realized it until this very moment, but just the sight of another warm body out in the cold, it stirs something within you in your stomach, you feel it rising up into your chest. You remember the hunger. You can hold yourself, but you think it curious again, as if you could have forgotten thirst that you had. As you watch him, you can almost hear his heartbeat as he goes walking down and starts pulling out a branch from underneath the snow. You two continue to walk. Yeah. <clears throat> After some time winding through this snowy village in and out of large pine trees along this cobble path, past several houses with their lights casting orange glow out into the street. You know you only now have about an hour before the sun sets. But there before you, some 30, 35 feet tall, is the front gate of Cress. Should we wait out there? With 
that encouragement. The doors begin to pull open without a body there to open them. I guess so. The wind comes tunneling in through that gatehouse. You feel it rush, stirring the snow up in flurries around your feet. And there, in the middle of a wide open road between two large standing pine trees, dark against the pale sky, is a black carriage gilded with gold and two obsidian horses. see bundled up in several layers of black clothes, his hair plastered down to his face in long black tendrils. You see the pinched face of a dusk elf. He gets off his bench and with a thud of his feet hits the ground, comes over and opens up Tatiana, please. Thank you. Oh, sorry. You a moment. He goes and closes the door behind you, and you're sitting now inside a very cushioned, well padded uh, carriage, very fine and yet very old. You can tell there's wares in the fabric, and at the same time, just the trim of gold foil and all the details around it. There's actually a painting there of just a forest on the inside. And you see as you study it out a moon, a small crescent there, little bats glittering amongst the painting. Your condition is to take effect soon, no? It would be as soon as the sun sets. Well, I have no wish to stop again this night. So your separate partition should take effect now, yes? Would that be a good idea? It is. Come. He pulls you forward. Can I open the door? Do I know where it is? Sure, yeah. I'm See, they, they kind of walk past it towards the back I of the carriage just, there. I don't think I would just sit there. You gonna be okay in there? As long as I'm able to get there, I guess I'll be okay. You and hear you the fiddling with the lock just as they're... He won't harm you, I've asked. I, I trust you. I know. I'm sorry. I'm worried what this partition entails. Heavy chains rattle as <laughs> And you see there, he has a large black coffin sitting on the back <clears throat> of his carriage. He opens it up and you see it's padded inside with black felt, a portal to the abyss as he stands there and bows, beckoning you forward. And, and this is my partition, then. I'd like to reach a hand inside it and make, just feel that there is a solid ground to, to the bottom of it. There it is, yeah. There it is, okay. there it is. We haven't had, we do not have all night. Step forth. Of course, yes. Yes. Yeah, I to get in. He goes, raises up, reaches forward. When morning comes, I will release you. You hear the chains rattle again and they scrape across the box. You hear the chain shake. He's checking it, pulling on it, making sure it's tight. You put your hands across each corner of the box, feeling it. It's padded with a lot of felt. Feel strange against your skin. 
it's cold. Everything, the light, has all been absorbed by this box. You feel it's completely dark. You can't see a single thing. And that, for the moment, is where we're going to go. You guys see food? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. Yeah, right on the lid. <clears throat> That'd be awesome. Give us a nose. Amadeus, you walk along the outside of a palisade. These shaved logs, uh, the spikes, you go around inspecting them, you see one pointed out. Someone or something had broken off the tip so that they could crawl up into the city or out of the city. You're standing there with another pair of gentlemen, uh, both of them Barovians, grew up their whole lives in Brooklyn, Milwaukee. Um, and he goes, Well, um, we could always just shave them back sharp again. Uh, 
the rules were all very unclear and only at the behest of the Baron before. Now that Lady Vokter is in charge, Ernst has reminded you that, uh, in fact, the city is to remain free. And during the daytime, the gate should be open. At nighttime, visitors should be allowed inside the walls. You can tell a good portion of the men are skeptical. Uh, there's talk of werewolves and whatnot. But as the day ends, you find yourself now standing outside the city, walking back to that front gate, which is still open because it's before dusk. And there's a little bit of excitement in you because you know today is the first day you get to show your wife your house you purchased for her. Hopefully, there you go. That was a funny example. <laughs> Hopefully, he was supposed to have come today while you were off at guard duty. So we hope the forest will finish. Mm. Mm. We'll see. Um, I'm gonna go to the water. Yeah, you walk through the city, and for some <clears throat> reason, it doesn't seem nearly as dark walk along those cobbles and people going in and out of their buildings and men grumbling to each other. A woman who's no, no, stay inside. You know we're not supposed to be out after dark. But as you continue to walk, you find yourself <laughs> at the blue water end. Still not open, but there is a light on inside, and that is a welcome sight. You hear boys running their feet clumping across the wood floor. Her, their mother yells at them, Boys, down, down! As you open that door, you see Bray swinging from a chandelier. <laughs> the other one just belongs. <laughs> Amadeus, how was it? It was an interesting first day. You see the other kid fall. <laughs> He hits oh the table, the whole thing spins out. He goes spinning and rolling onto the floor. <laughs> okay? The boy kind of runs over there. Uh, he goes, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> you just see Danica just staring there. Kids. <laughs> what can you do? Apparently, yeah, how was it? That was an interesting first day. Ups and downs. Still figuring it out. I believe you. She's doing better. Surprise me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she goes back off into the kitchen. So you walk to the inn and the door is already cracked. Uh, Lenore, you in here? So you peek inside. You see her there, sitting on the bed. She stands up and runs over to you. She goes and gives you a hug. It's lopsided. The way she only uses one arm. To... But she seems to pull you in all the closer for it. Well, you're alive. I'm still, yes. How are I'm you doing today? today? I'm packed. I'm ready. You ready? I'm very ready. I'm nervous. I hope you like it. I'm sure I will. A lot of options. Yeah. In Valaki, there's a lot of options. Surprisingly. All right. Well, now you have me extremely <laughs> excited. Uh, would you help me? I, just a couple bags over here. I'll just... She goes, she leans down, she swings one over her back, and there's another two at the hop rack. She picked them up. You head back downstairs, and Danica already has the food. Um, she has them in these small wooden plates or that are clamped over each other, like a little kind of tin. Um, she goes, to go? Thank you. And you are always welcome back. I appreciate that, Danica. Okay. Well, 
Well, go now. <sighs> All right. Shall we be off, Lenore? Come on. She nudges past you, kind of opens the door there. Cheers. One hand, swings it. The two of you step out into the night. You walk then across the street and follow down a small road as it begins to turn and curve back up towards the main. You find yourself going further and further. You're not sure actually, did you pass it already? But as you're looking at the numbers now, 110, okay, no, 110, it's 113. You continue walking until you see the green shingles of the roof and the freshly mortared brick, the stucco burned just a little bit around a window that had been patched and boarded up. She kind of looks over to you just... It's a fixer up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's good. Let's see the inside. As you go towards, it's beautiful. He's on the inside. So, no. This here is the front door. You open it up and walk inside. To your right, you see a staircase that leads up to a small mezzanine where it looks like. There is maybe a study. And yeah. to your left over here is the bedroom, the door closed. The fireplace here in the middle is the same as the stove, but at least it's central to the house. Should heat everything up nicely, but you did forget that you're going to need to get wood first. Um, you walk forward. At least Danica did have sense to give Lenore a lantern with her as you step inside. It's very dark. Lenore just kind of looks around for a moment. I could live here. I hope so. I put a lot of money down on it. She <laughs> <laughs> <Jesus. laughs> sets the lantern down on the table. I love it. We'll take a little bit of wood for it. You can make a little bit of wood. What is that? What was what? what? <laughs> See there. No. Not yet fixed. It's a large stain on the floor. They were supposed to come in and fix that. Obviously they have not. Alright. Uh, you can always throw a carpet over. You see the uh, the bedroom. <laughs> she goes and walks. Into the room. You see a large four post bed. We're going to need no sheets. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, of course. Like I said, still some work to be done. Let's get going. Sounds like a plan. She drops her bags there. She runs over to you and gives you another big hug. And with that, we're going to leave. Back to a lot. Really quick. I'm not kidding, but I cough it. Let me out. Let me out. I can't take it anymore. There's no holes in here. I can't breathe. <laughs> Can I breathe in there? <coughs> okay, that's good. <laughs> What the wagon. That's, that's a wagon. Boom. It's gone. Annalie, you sit there inside the wagon as it rocks back and forth against the ruts in the road. It moves very quickly as it rolls. You hear the horses outside. But there's some sort of peace in it. As you know your destination, 
know that Vladimir can't see you. So sorry. But Verlern is just beyond that wall. You stare there looking at that painting. Mostly it resembles the night sky outside now, how the clouds wisp across the moon. You're able to look out these shuttered windows. The warbled leaded glass distorting it to walk as a continues. Just go quickly past the trees and you see that moon outside. expectation when suddenly the voice spits forth. Where are we? Trying to get some sleep in a carry. Why is it dark? My eyes are closed. You feel the muscles in your arm tense until suddenly your hand shoots can I, forward. Can I resist it at all? Um, yeah, go ahead and roll for strength. 20. Wow. <coughs> you feel that twitch, that muscle inclination. You clench your fist. You keep it still. A carriage to where? To the lucky. Why? I just need to transport there. I don't want to stay in Crest. I'm that crazy abbot. What more did he tell you? Dawn came quickly. What more did he tell you? Of what? Of Tatiana? Yes, of Tatiana. The reason we're here in Kresk, we're here in Kresk. Yeah. Uh, what was the last thing that you heard then? I don't remember when you left. Green eyes. Green eyes. Green. So it's green eyes, <clears throat> um, dark brown hair. Auburn hair. Is it Auburn? Okay, Auburn. You said green eyes was the last thing. Um, Wait, that was a blanket. Are you lying? Was that a blanket <laughs> question? <laughs> roll deception. <laughs> oh, I was on a roll. Oh. oh. Twelve. He goes quiet. <laughs> what else? Um, I don't quite remember what else. The green eyes, auburn hair. Uh, <laughs> I mean, a normal human woman. Other than that, there wasn't very many distinct characteristics. Did he tell you how we might find her? <clears throat> um, did he tell me? I don't know. Did he ever go to no. Okay. Yeah. No, he didn't say anything. I mean, we just had to search for her, I guess. Or we just had to search for her. Auburn hair. Auburn hair. Tiger hair. <laughs> <laughs> he goes quiet and doesn't speak to you unless you speak to him. Do you say anything? <laughs> Do you try and sleep? Yeah, I, I would like to try to sleep. Go ahead and roll for constitution. 17. Somehow the cold, you feel as if you'd be able to see your breath, but the rocking of the wagon, you get accustomed to it. 
until it rocks you slowly off to sleep. So. Suddenly, <laughs> the door opens up and you're greeted by this haze of white light as it streams in to the coffin through the trees. It's morning. Excellent. Out. Gladly. Get out as quick as I can. Mm. Your chains can. Where, where are we? In this village woods. How close are we to Velaki? Uh, we will be to Velaki tonight. Tonight? By Late. Night uh, late tonight. Come now. It will be later still. Yes, of course. He goes, opens the door for you. And there, you see him walk inside. You've been awake for a couple hours now. Hello. Good morning. How Good morning. was it? What happened? <clears throat> um, it's not the most comfortable of uh, places. Never slept in a coffin before. Mm. Did, uh, did Vladimir say anything? Did yes. He he spoke to me as, mm. as I assume as soon as night fell. What did he say? Oh, asked me a, a better description of Papiana. Mm. Um, what does he know? He knows about the auburn hair and the green eyes. Green eyes. And the only other thing I told him is that she is a normal human woman other than that. How many auburn-haired girls have you seen? How many green-eyed girls have you seen in Barovia? Ah, uh, I, I remember only one other auburn-haired covered girl, really. But um, uh, yes, I mean, there's not much we can do. Alright, promise for you. <clears throat> Sleep comfortably? Were you able to sleep? Uh, surprisingly, yes, actually. <laughs> um, after adjusting to it and dealing with Vladimir, uh, I was able to get some sleep at least. That's good. Yeah. Did he know where you were? Where we were going? I told him my eyes were closed and it seemed to work, but we'll see. We have um, one more night, unfortunately. Yes, yes, I sadly aware of that. Um, and then there's the whole thing with dinner. It is a dinner, after all, so... Yes, but, um, well, <clears throat> it depends on how you look at it. I don't know how much you'll be joining for that meal. Yes. So, it could be any time. But if morning is dinner, then I don't know. I, I guess. Maybe uh, knowing your situation, I'm, it'll be more. I don't know. That would be nice. I would like to not worry about that, but I don't think I don't know him well enough to much. know. I'm sure he'll want to see you. Who knows? Maybe he'll want to talk to Vladimir. That would be terrifying on my <laughs> part, but I could understand it. In a certain aspect. Maybe. I don't You've know. You've talked with him, though, right? How is he? I mean, we've met. I've met him once. Back at Sapul. That was a long, or a few weeks ago. Yes. Recent amount of time. That's a long time. Months. <laughs> months. Really? <laughs> feels months. Weeks ago. Yes. He's well. Nice. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I'm interested to see how much of the tales are true. Everybody calls him the devil. Yeah. I don't believe that. Hmm. He has. I don't know. I've slowly come to understand him more and more as we've gotten to know each other. But and I, I've known him in, before as well. Oh, yes, of, of course. <laughs> so 
So those memories I remember, and I actually see what Hulu used to be as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How is it? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, a drop, ooh, I don't know. So a rock. We hit a rock. <laughs> um, how do you see this? Is it like a dream? Is it a vision? Or both. They've happened both. to me both ways of past lives. Interesting. But you know, I the people who see who he really is don't consider him the devil. And that's what I should say. The people who know him closer, which mm -hmm. might not be very many, but um, the Pistani know him best, and they mm. honor him. You know, yeah. they see right. him that way, and he treats them very well. I mean, they see him as a prince, do they not? From what I've heard. Yes. And he treats me very well. He's very kind and thoughtful. And it can't be too bad of a guy, then. I don't think. I just think people misunderstand him and what he's gone through as well. He has mysteries of his own. I still fully don't understand that, of course. Hmm. But from what I do know now, you know. I mean, you have only just met him in this life, but. Yes. Well, no, I met him in other lives. No, yes, that, that is what I'm saying. Oh, right, now, oh, right now, as yes. Anna. Yes, as Anna. Seems weird to say that now, to be honest. Really? This seems like a far off memory now, to be honest. Far off life, too. A lot has happened. I really prefer to be called Tatiana. I only go by Anna just in case for protection and. Yes. Yes, I understand that. Until it gets close to my time, then I will no longer use that. I'm a little worried about that. That's yes. why I don't set it before. Dream gift is fine, but I um, think you will find him fascinating. I do. Would you see him as an amenable person? Amenable? Explain. Ah. Uh, someone keen to help others. He really just has his person, and that's who he cares about the most. Hmm. Others, he is respectful and yeah. friendly and all that, but I'm sure if they asked for help and they were close. I've seen it with the Pistani. Hmm. He helped a girl once, actually. Really? Yeah. Uh, she, was, so? she was about to be murdered, and he saved her. Sorry. He wow. knew her father, who was a Pistani, and so he went and saved her and brought her back to him. So it's just a little bit of a piece. He definitely takes care of the, the Pistani yeah. people, for sure. That's and obviously you as well. Mm. Um, interesting. Okay. I appreciate you and I. Ever since I've, you know, come back, you've accepted me who I am. I mean, of course, I'm going to ostracize you for any difference from when I first met you. There's no reason to. Still, I just wanted to say thank you. You've never looked down on me or judged me for it, and you've accepted me who I am and who I want to be, and a really great friend, so thank you. I appreciate you as well, and you've been kind and generous and 
very helpful to me as well. And I'm excited that I'm your friend and that I get to experience some of this journey with you from an outside perspective. And yes. It'll be exciting. Just one more day and then I'll see. I'm very excited to meet him. I'm very nervous, but. <laughs> <laughs> what? Get out of here. That was so great. I had about six eye rolls. <laughs> I saw half. Only six. Yeah, anti inspiration. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, I take an inspiration point from you. We now go. <laughs> I'm little spin out of it. Nice, That checks out your movement. Back to the Lucky. Amadeus, you lie there in the bed, and you're stirred, your eyes still closed, you hear a crackling fire just on the other side of that stucco wall. shadows across the wall of your new home. And you go to that door. As you open it, you're face to face now with a man dressed all in black. <clears throat> and you're Rohadin. And you are <laughs> Amadeus. What have you Come, the bell has been rung. Uh, you are expected. Okay, well, you're gonna give me a few minutes, and then you can stop by the blue water in as well. I have an hour. I will meet you at the city square. walks up to the bench of that carriage. He looks back over his shoulder. Through the strings of black hair, you see the one ear poking out long through his squinted eyes. Something is strange about him and his presence as he leaves. You swear you can almost hear screams of women and children trailing him. It's 
only a breath than it's thought of it, might have been imagined. Perhaps it was the horses and the wheezing as they snort. The whole carriage leaps forward and takes off down through the city. You're left there standing in your doorway. You now only see your shadow lit out into the street by the coals of your fire. What do you do? I'm going to go back and make a little run for it. How so? Just gently like that. Hit a bucket of water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotta get pulled by the bed. Yeah. Just in case. Um, <laughs>
forces the gear and the belts tighten with leather straps. The door remains open. I step down. The learn. You know that you've stopped, yet you're unaware of where you are. The sound has been muffled. All you can tell is that for the last few minutes, the road hasn't been quite so rutted. You do it. Are we in the town square? You are in the middle of the town square. The Baroness, Lady Vochter, her mansion, uh, is at the far end. And all town square is dark except for a few lanterns that have been lit in the street. the latch on the coffin and rams into the chains that have been wrapped around it. <laughs> what is this? Where are we? I obviously hear that. Yes, you do. Oh gosh. Can I can I message her without Vladimir hearing it? Uh you can certainly try. say you surmise you would be able to okay uh you don't think you can read your thoughts really okay i would yeah you would already know that <laughs> oh god it's true <laughs> yeah um yeah i'd like to oh shoot i have to see her uh so i can't cast message then i hear it though so yeah, yeah you would hear yeah that you hear that box the coffin jet black Matching the carriage as it and rattles. And the elf is nowhere to be seen. Uh, he's up by the horses. Okay. I'm and then, sure. actually, sorry, no, he was up by the horses. Yes. But as you're outside, yes, he's left. Okay. I'm gonna just wait a second, like kind of where I can see. Actually, I would. I'll wait. I can never. Mind. I can see. Okay. 
Yeah, you see the lid it. sprung. Okay. And off kilter. It, so the lid, like, it, I'm going to back up then to where he couldn't see me if we look down. Okay. Because he could potentially lift his head and look out, right? Or is it just open? I'm not understanding. Like, yeah, it's uh, it's open like a coffin might be. Which yeah. Where my coffin was. <laughs> um, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> and, uh, and then it's sagging just slightly, but it is only open on one side. So Can he, I? Sorry. Go ahead. So if he looked like he did this, he'd be able. You'd to have see? to. You could press himself up to the lid, and you'd have that vision. You'd be able to see outside the lid. But he can't see where I'm at. If you were back behind it, or if you were far. I'm on the side. Yeah. I just want to be out of the view if he can see me. That's. Can I hear her walking over here? Mm, roll for perception. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> That's a lot. I'm not I'm just listening since I broke. Mm. Yeah, I'm not good You hear the faintest footsteps coming down the road. Not you, but you. breath, a heartbeat, you recognize it before you even see him. He's there holding a lantern on the dance. Yes. footsteps and you see the glow of a lantern on the cobbles just outside as it goes closer. I don't see him though. Or see any you any don't person. see who it is, no. But you could press yourself forward to look. Minutes before, Amadeus, you left your house and made your way to the Blue Water Inn and Mill. You walk across those streets there, and you see it, the lights all of it off. How do you approach? Knock on the door. You do that, but you know it's very, very late. After some time, you see Danica, her face at the window. Sorry to wake you up. It's fine. Is everything okay? Come in. It's just...
back of the carriage in the middle of the lap. This is not Kresk. It's not cold enough to be Kresk. Are we back in Milwaukee? If we are in the town, I would assume it is Milwaukee, yes. I don't like your answers. Get us out.
see the lock? Uh, you can't currently. I can't. Okay. I'd like to try to. You, but I, I have to I have to get my spell of course. It, ah I forgot about your spell book. Oh, you were going to get it? And I asked Lady Faulkner about it, but uh, what did she say? You know how she was last time. <sighs> holding right. Pulling stuff back. That's yes. fine. Yes. If you need help. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um potentially yes, I don't know where I'm looking. It's been a while since I've been here as a house, so let's make this quick. No, of course, yes. Um, I wouldn't want you to be late to the carriage again, so let's go quick. The two of you, you step out of that carriage, you watch him go, and you make haste towards the mansion. I follow. You do? Okay. All right, stealthily? Oh my god. Okay, roll for stealth. Um, you are in a hurry, you know you only have maybe 15, 20 minutes at most to walk. Well, I'm not, I'm not very worried about the time. Okay. Roll... Uh, no, actually, neither of you are... are okay. You both walk across the square. Can I find a place to hide and turn around? Uh, yeah, you'd have to walk across the square into an alleyway. Or you could just walk off to the side of the mansion. Just in broad daylight, man. It's night. Okay, you walk forward closer to the mansion. You take a brief right turn past where? a tree where you're in shadow and what are you by. doing? Just trust me. Okay, just I'll meet you there. All right. All right. You watch the trail off in two different directions. You head towards the main door and Amadeus, full into black. <laughs> <laughs> We're staying into a large bird. <laughs> Where do you go? I'm gonna fly over uh, towards the right, kind of eye level. Okay, you yeah, you fly up over towards the front door and you stand there. This plague doctor esque seraphim being with large black. Are you a raven? I thought you were no, a raven. Oh, 
ravens. Like, I was not aware ravens. Oh, I, <laughs> where ravens would make any sense right now. Back up, back up. <laughs> you turn into a raven. There we go. And land there <laughs> at the doorstep. <laughs> okay, completely oh. different. <laughs> you see this. A bird now. Okay. Um, we, we're at the door then. Yes. Alright, I'll, I'll fly around the window. as you fly around you don't see anyone you perch at a windowsill of the bedroom and the beds are empty it's 3 a.m. as if the house has been abandoned you continue to fly around what's that? Uh, <laughs> yeah you, you land on one of the windows uh, let's see it's really hard to breathe yeah you go up to the first window Locked, locked. But you do find one as you land there. You can only see the latch of it, and it looks to be unlocked from the inside. But you're unable to open it in your form. Uh, do you leave the door open? No. And I don't see any spell books laying around in the room. So. Uh, I'm gonna fly back down. the house as you're laying. You go <clears throat> searching for the library and you begin to hear the faintest voice. I'm trying to figure out what this is like. You listen. What languages do you speak? Oh god. Common, celestial, and infernal. It is an infernal. Oh. Hail to the one, the ruler of nine. You hear this chant from the deep voices as they continue, men and women. Hail to the one, the ruler of nine. It's then followed by clapping. Oh, yes! Oh. Hail to the one, the ruler of nine. Hell to the one. You hear the clicking of coins. Uh, I'd like to stealthily keep on moving towards the sound. As you peer into the library, you see there is a large gathering. windows here, all of them drawn with thick curtains. You're only able to peer through a set of pocket doors. And you see a lot of them dressed in red, flowing robes as they praise up to the sky and down. Hail them you see springing up what appears to be nothing gold coins 
flicker and skitter across the floor. You then see her, Lady Vakta, beneath one of the robes. Yes, go on, take it. It's for you, all of you. It is for you. Hail to the one, the ruler of night. Everyone has brought their tongues. Come, take a seat, we shall review. She begins reading something now common and familiar. Pages from your own spell book. She's reading to them the fly spell. Did I just learn? They should know that. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> but as you watch closer, you do see that that book, in fact, is not your own. It's inscribed. Mm -hmm. It's been copied. Do I see mine anywhere? Inside that room, you look around a minute longer. And you don't. You do, however, as you look down at your feet, you see something of an altar. Not in the room, but down the hall. It's no longer lit. The candles have gone out, but still the smell of smoke and incense, it remains. down the hall and there's a small room there, a closet. There above that altar is a picture, a portrait of a woman with auburn hair and green eyes. You see it in the low light and there before it Placed as a present is your spell book. You don't think it was placed there for you. Maybe as some sort of sacrifice, some sort of homage. What do you do? How far away? Fifteen feet. Fifteen? Is it, is it visible to all the people that are in the room? No, no. This is, you are standing here looking at pocket doors. It is down the hall in a separate room. Oh. I'd like to mage hand it to myself. You do that. The tone comes floating up, sliding through the air until it reaches your hands. And you feel it's familiar. You feel like a moment of joy. It leaps your fingers. <gasps> what is that? As you glance back up at that portrait now, you see a small plaque labeled beneath it. The final bride. You can't help but think it looks very much like Anna. <laughs> you do so. There's not a word. From stepping outside, and you see a raven flying past the window as it lands there at the front steps. Amadeus, you see him with his tome in hand. And you see them emerge. Well, I can I go back? I wanted sure. to go back earlier. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I I'll yeah. wait a little bit and then yeah. I go back to the very Your friend, where is he? He's getting something important to him. He'll be back soon. He is late. You should you should get back to the carriage now, Amadeus. Don't worry about me. 
I'm gonna change it back. Uh, the, the jersey. You come closer. He opens the door for you. You're not blind. The other, where is he? On his way, as you have seen. He had some business to uh, take care of. He closes the door and stands there beside it, watching you. I come up walking. You get the inclination that he somehow could see you further than you could see him. Mm. He's with us now. He's already starting to see come closer, he only opens the door. I walk in. The door closes. And a moment later, you hear the whinnying of horses. carriage reels as it begins to trench through these streets. I'm looking down at Zelda the entire time. I don't look up at all. What time is it? Uh, it is roughly 4 something. 4.13. 4.13. Nah, this is, I'm looking at my gyro watch now. I have both the <laughs> book and my watch, my pocket watch. It is a very long ride. After some time, the sun rises. The entirety, there's been no word from Vladimir. I'm glad you, I'm glad you brought your book. Yes. Where did oh. you find it? Huh? Where did you find it? Oh, I didn't see funny story. Didn't see anyone in there? Ooh, there are. Oh, okay. Um, so, um, I'm not quite sure how much we can trust Lady Boxer. I didn't trust her. Uh, um, she's a very nice woman when you see her in the daytime. Um, at night time. <laughs> um, what did you see? I don't know who all is involved in it, but I assume it is most of the book club. Um, uh, would I actually know the name of? Oh yeah, you've been there. Okay. Yeah. What is it again? Uh, oh, I can't remember. Asmodeus. Asmodeus. Or Asmodeus. Let's say that. Asmodeus. Yeah. Asmodeus. Yeah, that's Asmodeus. Asmodeus. They are worshiping Asmodeus. Who is? Fair enough. I guess you two wouldn't necessarily be privy to that information. Um, he is the ruler of the nine hells. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I was making sure. Is that right? Hell for the one. The nine <laughs> yes. <hells. laughs> okay. Sounds lovely. The nine hells. Yes, there are nine layers to hell. Each its own realm. Osmodius is the one above them all. Oh. Below them all, I guess. <laughs> yes, sorry. Uh, how did you know? Or how did I saw them. Sharon came in. I mean, how do you know of the nine hells? Oh, I've been there. You've been there. You went there. Supervised with Morgan Canyon, of course. I did not go alone, but I've been quite a few many places. How, how do you wow. get there? Ah, uh, <laughs> the river Styx. <laughs> the river Styx. I do not know what that is. It's it's quite a mess going between any realm. Mm -hmm. It's 
very complicated with that. But, um, you know, okay. so uh, you, with Morton King in your time, had traveled the Astral Sea. Uh, there, acting almost as a stream of the absence of light, instead of the many different streams of light, you were able to locate the River Styx and followed it until you found the first layer of hell. Well, it's an adventure. Quite a life filled yeah. with them, saints. Yes. What was it like? Not necessarily a good place. <laughs> you remember it as a wasteland where falling stars would crash into the earth, um, lighting things on fire. It smells of sulfur and brimstone in this river. You remember cold black. That if anyone touched it would most certainly die. You remember the cannibal tribes of the forests. So what exactly do they get out of worshipping Morgan Raven? Osmodius. Osmodius. Well, um, I assume there's many a ritual with him that you could do, but the one that uh, was occurring when I got there is one that was spitting, it was gold pieces, gold pieces out of thin air. Oh, wow. Uh, yes. Hmm. Is there much of a difference, though? People who worship the Morning Lord compared to people who worship this realm? I mean, should we judge them based um, on that? Or just... It is a fair point. Um, are they dangerous? So far, no. But I'm slightly worried as they were using the copy of my tome to attempt to learn uh, a spell I've been working on. Fine, now that I have this book and perfected it. Which is? The ability to fly. That would be quite a spell. Indeed. Hmm. I wonder what they would have for use for that, though. The ability to fly, or why they would want. Yes, I, I am not quite sure. Of, hmm. uh, I mean, I've I've been to the nine layers, but I do not know many of the followers. Especially not personally. Well, how did you get it? How did you get the book? Um, it was interesting. It was placed there in a closet, as if it was meant for someone to take it. Gone. But it seemed like the person was not me. Why? 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 Uh, there were no specific indicators, it just... It felt like I wasn't supposed to get it back, almost. It's, it's like they were hiding it from me. Yeah, that's what it seemed like when we were asking her that. Yeah, she, was, she was very evasive about it when we asked her earlier. But for who? I don't know. I mean, there's not many spellcasters that I know that are here. I mean, there's me. I'm going to highly, heavily assume that she is one as well, Doctor. And Glinton, who knows where he is, that place is his home. The wagon careens. You find yourself casting your sight out the window. You see now you're in the mountains. Hills rolling past trees as you look down them. You can see off far below into a valley. Spire of a tower, followed by a second as the trees part and begin to unveil the cold gray stones of Castle Ravenloft. 
carriage careens <laughs> as you near closer and closer. You look out these windows and the black trees seem to spit by quickly until you eventually come to this gate tower. Portcullis before you stands firm, but the wagon does not seem to slow. As you near, you pass a set of marble statuettes, a woman raising her sword to the sky, and the other falling to pieces. The portcullis raises, and the wagon just barely clears it, the carriage rushing into this cavernous gatehouse. Before you, you look out the window, the carriage continues and pulls off to the side, slowing the whole thing, juts and rolls. But there, already before you, the doors are already open. Large wooden doors, rotten iron a strangely warm glow casting out to the courtyard. A moment later, Rahadin opens the door and swings it inside. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Castle Raven. Do you Look out that door, you see a large stained glass window, and you almost think you can see a shadow behind it. As it dissipates, and the drizzling rain begins to fall. Come quickly inside, or you'll catch your death. You exit. He takes your hand and helps you down out of the wagon. He bows. I'd like to walk out after him. You do so, and he kind of steps back as he offended him. I bow to him. <laughs> he stands there and offers his own hand to you to help you come down this wagon. <laughs> I didn't take it. <laughs> you walk down, though. And the wagon takes off on its own. He closes the door just as it begins to move, and he follows you inside until finally, <laughs> behind you, the large wooden doors close. You stand inside a vestibule, a small room for the others that has a set of very large stone pillars reaching up to the ceiling. They are mounted on them. Are eight gargoyles carved of a black stone. Their faces looking down at you. They almost seem to follow. But there before you, another figure comes shuffling. As he comes closer, you realize that his face is also twisted, his jaw askew, a tooth protrudes, his ears are fuzzy and brown, and he's a mongrel folk. One that you'd seen in the Abbey of St. Markovia. Twisted, he has a foot 
that has what almost looks webbed like a duck. He's all sorts of mismatch. He only stands about four and a half feet tall with his hunch. As he looks up to you, and if it isn't, oh my day, yes. <laughs> hey brother, I will take you now to your rooms, yes? Oh, lovely. Please! Uh, Cyrus, one moment. We learn it is close to nightfall now. we should greet this other visitor together, yes. Come, I have something to show you. All right. Cyrus, take the others to their rooms. Denno will be served shortly. He leads you down a set of stairs. Well, Cyrus takes the two of you up this winding staircase. You watch and listen to the footsteps of Alerna as he goes down. And for now, that is where we will stop. <laughs> I'm hungry. Oh, me too. <laughs> Cyrus leads the two of you up the stairs, winding, winding, winding. You find yourself almost sore from having to take that left turn up and up and up until eventually you come to the first break, a small platform that leads off to a large wooden door gilded in wrought iron and silver. Cyrus comes forward. Oh, here you are, miss. Watch. He puts the keys back on his belt and bows. Please enter. Your room is just through. I look at all the gates and then walk through. The, girl, the door <laughs> slams close behind you. Not in any way in malice, but in. Uh, Bored. <laughs> <laughs> in his joy for the job that he takes. Now this way and begins to lead you up the stairs. But, Anna Lee, as you step to that room, you notice that you're already now in a dining room. There's a long table out before you. The places are all set, but there's no food. Candles light the room on candelabras all around. You see another door off to the side. You go through that find yourself now in a very large study, a lounge, and there on that wall is a massive picture of yourself standing in the way that you stand, your auburn hair in a purple dress draped with wolf skin. It's centuries old, much like that other portrait upstairs. You see the books all around and yet another door, and you can tell there's a light on through there and you thought you heard movement as you go to that final door there. <laughs> you come to a bedroom, a large
Irish mosaic floor, the ceiling concave, the stucco, and there, that large stained glass window with a massive red curtain. But your eyes first go to someone there sitting on the bed, a woman, no, a girl. You recognize her, she's Vistani Bell, the little girl that Strahd had saved from the lake. She sits there. Tatiana? Bella? I'm to be your handmaid. There is a dress for you. Uh, here, let me show it to you. She goes over to a wardrobe where she opens it and it's hanging. You can tell that she's opened it before. She's just looking at it. Do you like it? I think it is beautiful. It is very beautiful, thank you. It matches the pretty lady of, over on, on, on the wall, the portrait. It does, doesn't it? Do you want to put it on? Sure. Okay. She goes over and begins to take it and bring it over to you. And with that, you begin to dress. We'll go now to Amadeus. Where are you going to go? I turn the dress on and grab the dress. Amadeus, you continue up these stairs, winding and winding winding for some time, until finally you come to another room. There on the wall is a picture of your sister, painted, you can tell it's quite old, by some master artisan. You've never seen art quite like that where you're from, but looks very lifelike. Cyrus goes forward, begins to open the door, fiddling with his keys. Oh, this one, I think, right there. Yes. Sir, enter your room. Dinner will be shortly. <laughs> and he leaves you in the room. We're now going to go Follow Rahadin down the stairs for some time. They wind lower and lower and lower. The lights seem fewer in between. You follow him, he continues to walk until finally it comes to a small hallway. The door at the end. He walks tenderly up to the middle of the hallway, pauses, and steps forward again, and continues to walk this way. <coughs> Night is nearly upon us. Well aware of that. This way. He leads you forward into a larger hall, yet another door down to your left. It seems to step down here. He goes, picks at the door, and swings it gently, placing a hand on your back as he guides you into the room. Filled with bones, like the catacombs you've seen once before. <clears throat> but in this way, a, a gleeful, artistic way, a man taking a 
cog much further, and you can tell there are thousands of dead in this room. Skulls strung up to a massive chandelier. And yet the one that stands out to you more than the others is a large skull on the wall. Two great horns protrude from its massive crest that lead down to a jaw filled with hand-sized teeth is that of a dragon. Rahadin bids that you take a seat. What is your pleasure? Do you like it? It is my handiwork. It is. You have. sense of rage filling you in your chest that bubbles up like a frog in your throat that says nothing. Vladimir, do you like what I've done with it? I use it now as walled decor. Please tell me you like is silent. To think you're back where it all began. Or should I say where it all ended? You know he never left. something off the table you hadn't noticed before, blending in with the wood, with the uh, bone, is a wooden axe. He lifts it, and <laughs> the whole thing falls nine feet to the floor. <laughs> bone splinters. <laughs> you jolt forward now. I'll kill you! He goes, ah! Destroy him completely. 
or I should say, force him from that body of which he inhabits. I'm quite fond of that body, haven't you? He plays a strangely high, non-musical note on the flute, and suddenly <laughs> the glass shatters. I have seven more of those. Now, Rilone, I pardon me for ignoring you, but holy water will do very little to you. The glass, however, well. <laughs> you gentlemen should be on your best behavior tonight, you understand. find a small table set out before you, bookshelves to one side, and then at the far end of the room is a door, which leads to a bedroom. You go and walk over to that door and see inside. There, sitting on the couch, someone that you recognize. Van Richten. She's there. <laughs> so you saw the lit lantern? I uh, did, yes. Very good. 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 Same way as you adore. <laughs> when did you get here? Shortly after you. Didn't have much time to look around, but uh, I suppose you taking dinner shortly should give me some time. What's your plan? My plan currently is to find a plan. There has to be some information here, something stored away, something, something we can use. Did you bring it? forward, opens that door, comes again. <laughs> Smells like dinner. He swings the door open and then goes creeping up the stairs shortly.
and sitting there at the bench, enraptured, a man plays the straw. His back turned to you, continues to play. Let's start. Welcome to Castle Ravenclaw. His eyes lock with you as he seems to float forward. Only the eyes seem to move until he reaches for your hand. He takes it and bends, kissing on the base. Welcome to my lord. Sit down once more. Please, help yourself. These pheasants are quite rare. They are brought here all the way from the Sword Coast, where I hear it that. This is where you are from, no? Uh, yes, indeed. I'm from the Sword Coast. Tell me where. What city? Uh, it's the uh, city of Baragos. 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 Perhaps that is after my time. Uh, yeah. It is technically close to Waterdeep. Mm. Is it? I have known Waterdeep, my darling. Yes, it is. It's fairly close. Is a small village, no? What is it? Yes, it is not. It has grown much since you've seen it then. Has it? It is quite centuries. A city. Pass on. <laughs> the two of you are not from. This coast, no? No. And that tells me you are from a small island state. What is what is the name? Uh, it's in the middle of Jotun, Stein, and Hammerstein. I am sorry, I am uh, quite old. <laughs> I have not heard of these places. They're far north. The Northern Seas. Oh, the Northern Seas, yes. Barovia, you 
used to be out in the east. Though for the life of me, I can't seem to recall its neighbors. It used to be, yes. Well, it is no longer there. For we are in the mist still. Tell me, do you like it here? Um, somewhere near the east. You seem to be quite at home. More of the home than I expected. Your wife, how is she? My dear, how was the journey? It was gone. We had a few <coughs> bumps. Okay. No troubles with this one, no? Mm -hmm. No troubles. Only troubles are the hobby and us a little late. <laughs> had to go fetch my son. He uh, continues to cut at his meat. It's no trouble, not at all. They are honored guests. You'll be here. Rahadin has been with my family for centuries now. It's been 600 years. He served my father before me. Really? Yes. In the wars, it was quite some time ago. Now here in Barovia we are lucky, no? No wars to be had. No neighbors, no, either. <laughs> May I ask you a question? Certainly. become this way. I only heard tales from the sun and the folk around this around the uh, Barovia, but I'd like to hear from the men themselves. Yes, there are many stories, many wise tales. All woven together, all false, and yet in some ways all true. Barovia was my homeland the land of Izorovich Lai, um, many hundred years, hundreds of years ago, thousands. And yet, when the enemy came in their tribes to take it away, the great war began. Pardon me, I will not mention that name here. For the greatest defeat is that to be forgotten in life. But these people stole this land away from us. And after the passing of my father, I took up that mantle, rode back east, and reclaimed this land. This castle once destroyed many, many years before. I came back, sacked the place, drove out the barbarians, and with that, I built it up. Or I should say, my artisans built it up. Artemis was a great man, a great artisan. Quite exquisite, no? Quite, yeah. You must remind me, I will show you around sometime. I would love a tour of the place. It is quite magnificent from the outside. Yes. It is not what it used to be, but perhaps the touch of a woman will bring new life to it, no? <clears throat> but tell me, your studies. Mm -hmm. Yes, you are a wizard. 
Yes. Fascinating. You must have read thousands of books. Countless, yes. I've been studying for many, many years. <laughs> Most of my life, in fact. My library here is vast, but you can only read the same books. <laughs> in fact, I was reading one just the other day. It was about an undead dog. It was impossible to put down. I imagine so. <laughs> I just... But no, I, I have studied magic for a long time. Really? Never before have I seen such... kind as yours. In what way do you mean? Uh, the typical schools that were taught back in the days. Uh, I have not seen this line, it almost has to do with the strings of fate and time as they wind and weave themselves, you seem to touch them. It does seem that way, I do not mere master control over it, it appears when it wants to, more or less. It is a neat ability, I guess. eyes pull from Strahd, almost involuntarily, and indeed involuntarily, as they look over and glare at Anna, sitting still. Can I do anything? Um, yes, you can. It takes considerable effort, but what do you do? I just like put them back on straw and look at him. Well, Anna, you must tell me more about your home, growing up with this man. Were you always so close? Yes.
you and me. We are in a hunter's hall. I would rip open my shirt and show you the scar if I saw. But alas, it was the yes. I did have to kill him. Alec was his name. Well, I'm good. I harbor no ill will. Did you enjoy Kresk? It had interesting people inside. I did enjoy some people. I remember a few spots that were special. How so? The pool. How is he? Well, as you can suspect, mad as ever. I don't know if mad is the word I would use to describe a deva. A deva? A what? Oh, what do you mean? A... He is not from here, no. He's a strange man, if you can call him a man. A celestial being. Deva is a... Uh, Some call them seraphim, cherubim, uh, an angel of sorts. He has a lot of time he does. To he does not have the same uh, mind. <laughs> mind, yes. The he, same mind. He creates things. Creates he does. Little projects. Cyrus, the cook of this fine meal. Cyrus was one of his. Do you know him? Oh, yes. Are you friends? Uh, he, he is my servant, of course, yes. Friends. <laughs> no. <laughs> but um, Cyrus, he, he serves me well. Loyal. What higher quality can one have? He's a bit strange. I hope he treated you well. Mm -hmm. I see you biting your tongue. Is it our guest? We should just bring him up once. Would you excuse me? I, I, you must forgive me. It is very rude, but I will take him away for a mere moment and return. There's something I must address. Please feel free to wait. He stands. Um, he takes you then out into the hall and up to a front door. Oh, your glass is filled. Okay. Okay. There, he takes it and swings it open. Heavy. You get a rush of cool, damp air. Step inside this great stone hall. There at the far end, you see the faint glow of lantern light and tens of figures carved in stone. Knights, all of them. Paladins in armor. They watch you beneath the symbol of the morning lord stained glass at the far end. Are you a follower of the morning lord? <laughs> oh, my boy. No. Not to me. Back. Follow me. Of course. He leads you onward. Actually, 
into a chapel. Large stained glass windows all been boarded up. And there, in the center of the room, is an altar. On it is a small statuette of a priest kneeling. It's made out of a pure silver. As he approaches, he raises a hand to his face as if offended by the thing. Ah, my darling, Gertruda, please, would you do me the kindness of a favor? You see now a girl that you hadn't noticed before, young, brown hair tied up in a bun, very high on her head, and her eyes blue and very big and innocent in the way that she looks up. Of course, Lord Strong, of course. She goes reverent of the object. She picks it up carefully. This statue is that of a great cleric, Cyril. He ordained and blessed this chapel here. statue to the likes of you should not be touched I understand it would be a most painful death <laughs> but my dear perhaps it will make that man quiet himself Tatiana is quite a gracious person. Yes. I, I apologize. She always has been. How, do you, may I ask, how has that been? How do you mean? Going centuries and having this one person continually come up. I've heard that souls don't leave Barovia. 
because they keep coming back in a way. But I'm interested from a first person perspective on that. Especially one as prominent as yourself in these times. Of course. The two of you walk back into that hall where he continues to speak to you. <coughs> it is a strange thing. The two pause. We are back now. Gertruda is set it there on the table before him, would you do? This is Gertruda. She is a guest of the castle. Thank you, dear. Please. Ah, uh, yes. No, souls do not leave. Yes. <laughs> they do, however, uh, if they cannot linger, they are devoured. <clears throat> By what? There are great forces here at work. Though I do control these mists, I did not create them. You didn't? No. They were always part of the land, I think. But in my weakened state, they seem to leap up from the earth. And bound across this land, dropping off. It is, however, quite convenient, no? To have such clouds above where the sun may not strike. into the hall. Gertruda pokes her head, her hair in a bun just barely, as it leans out around the corner. She catches your stare. She pokes her head and you hear feet scamper. Do not mind her. She is a curious girl. thing. She wandered right in through these doors and these doors. While you are here, you are under my protection, but that is to say, you must take <coughs> heed of my advice. These walls are dangerous. When you slumber, would you defend them? You say not now. Is there more time to wake you up? Many years. by and those that did survive that day they were quite a lot older when I woke again then there were others of course once I learned of 
your reincarnation, I I often choose not to sleep when I matures again and I expect you to return. Sasha was quite a bit older. <laughs> but you are in the prime of your life now. In the blink. Age no longer touches you. <clears throat> Have you thought of it? not one more day, that is the promise. The price one is willing to pay. Expected more of an appetite from a hunter. <laughs> Save him, please. <laughs> Rahadin, would you please? He stands, offers cake. I'm going to cake. Vivistani, <laughs> <laughs> bring these from all over the world. Fresh fruits. From the south of the coast, islands, I'm told. <clears throat> from Cape. They are from further in the east than you would think. <laughs> Places to read about, no, to be told the stories, but to never go. Be where she could go. That's all I need is right here. Are you able to read? Since I am among friends, no. Really? I mean, I would have assumed, like, from the sun, you'd be able to come and go. The Vistani are my people. They are adopted members of my family, they, they leave whenever they wish, while I can freely grant permission for some to leave. I myself am trapped here just the same as you. Oh, 
Sorry. Better now. Here it again. Fair enough. They uh, are no more. Not like the Martikovs. They seem to flourish. Quite, yes. You continue to eat dinner <laughs> until Cyrus Bellevue comes shuffling in. Your plate, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Strahd just raises his glass, smiles at him as he takes it, and finally comes over to you. Do I have a glass as well? Yes, you do. Yeah. Take it back. Oh, yes, you just have a glass. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Are you finished with that, or would you like me to get you some food? Away, maybe later. What do you know about Amber and Mal? 
magical property you happen to have. It is a strange stone, alchemically. Heroi talks about it in his line of text as in a way amber traps the fly and preserves it. There are some properties it is said to have in preserving the spirits. Perhaps with some time, I can show you more about this, no? I would love that. How is it you come across the other stone? my memory once more. Uh, he is a, a great wizard, uh, not dissimilar from myself. Uh, he has a mustache. Very. Oh! I can't think of him now. Yes, uh, yes, Morgan King. Yes. Oh, I, I remember him. Yes. Yes. That's, that's where I got these ones. Trying to learn more about them. Hmm. So. Curious. Yeah, curious. created and only by return and returning a favor they might become true vampires you are something altogether different and I do not mean to say in any way that you are lesser than for all means you are greater than any specimen seem to cling to some vestige of life. But know as it fades, your power will grow. It seems I am sitting here amongst many interesting magical people now. Do you like to fly now? Tied so close to the ground. No, she will not. The hour grows late. Rahabim, would you mind bringing these two to their room? It was my pleasure. Oh, 
caution. Stay apart from the rooms. In the lower levels. Close as well. Close. Thank you very much. Rahadeen stands up. <laughs> Sorry. Rahadeen stands up. Um, and it's almost as beckoning as Strahd himself also stands there. Do you as well? As you stand, uh, Rahadeen takes you as Cyrus comes in. to Kresk, it was the nearest town, and there, in the crypt, I sealed you with the blood of the men and women of the clan. There, bathing in such blood, it entombed you for a time, a week or so. The blood is the life you took to a new life, yes? I hope it was not so terrible. This world is dark, <coughs> grim, and waste. But there is beauty here. walked into your room, sitting there, 
You walk over towards your bedroom. You've been dropped at the same room. Oh. <clears throat> you walk through that hall and go where the bedroom is, opening that door there. No one's there. from anyone. We get the powerful people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> ah, it's just scary. Really? I want to make sure that you're fine. Are you cautious? Just the wealth of knowledge that over centuries and then the power he also possesses I don't know it's it's fascinating intriguing oh, I have to know more can I go exploring exploring you said you could walk around I mean I'm not going to really explore as I'm going to go to one room Books are. Uh, I have to see what is there. No, no. combat. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> well, I have my like, oh. like, oh. like, oh. <laughs> music impacts everything. Uh, yeah. One change, we're like, wow, oh. already. Oh. We know what the music sounds like. All right, roll for history. I get to go first. As one of you stand there, suddenly a door swings open. <laughs> and out steps Van Richten. It's the closet. Behind him is only a single coat hung on a hook, but he looks a little disheveled as he strings his jacket forward. Van Richten, how did you get in there? How, how did, did you get in this castle? You know you had witches upstairs? Just above you. No. There's I didn't witches. Know. There were witches. <laughs> How long have you been here? Oh, um, well, since we got here. What? I'm sorry, I assume we talked. No. How long have you been here? You had a whole wagon ride. Um, he wasn't really with us in the wagon ride. But actually, you were with us. I was there the whole time, but he didn't talk to me. It was a quiet wagon ride. What are you doing here? I am setting forth a plan. But, uh, in what vein? He goes and he gets to step out into your other hallway here. I uh, he, he he hasn't stepped out just yet, have he? No, I mean he steps out into here. Oh, okay. In what vein? Get in the headlight. Yes, certainly. Um, what do you have there? It's a map of the entirety of the castle. I found it in my rummaging about in the study just upstairs. There's a way to hide something that's right in there. Let's see here. Okay, I've circled it. We're in this room. I want you to meet me. One o'clock. Down here. Wine cellar. But what? What do you plan to do? <laughs> he goes and like opens up the door. I will reveal that to you shortly. Uh, I have a few things I must fetch. And then we move. It's big. Oh, it's good. Tell me, what is it? I'll tell you. 
tell you when we reach there. Why do you need to tell everyone? I have no time for this. I'm going well, downstairs. There's plenty of time. And I'll tell you shortly. I'd like to cast momentary stasis on him. Okay. He has to make a constitution saving throw. Yeah, he fails. Oh. He's, he is uh, encased in a field of magical energy. I've basically frozen him. Okay. He's oh. just pointing at you. <laughs> no, you didn't do that. Can he still talk? I didn't think about that part of it. But he was leaving him. I, I'm aware he wanted the answers. I need this, but now he can't speak. Well, there's no stopping him. I had. Uh, what is what is he going to do? I don't know. That's a good question. One week. <laughs> I hope so. Like, it's until the next end of your next turn, so six seconds. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Really? Really? I'm trying to ask you a question. You're not giving me an answer. Hush. There he is. He goes looking upstairs, distrusting of the direction you've come from. Gargoyles on the roof. No one around him. These walls, they're living, breathing. Eyes everywhere. Fuck. I think I found my way through. None of these staircases make much sense. If you follow me to the wine cellar, that is where there's another staircase that will lead us up to a secret room that will then lead us on a ladder to another staircase and up there. It's the heart of the blind man himself. Crystal magic. Yeah. Difficult to explain. I read about it some in a book. Uh, a means of protecting oneself uh, against any form of injury or attack. It gives him, uh, for all the second life he has, maybe a third. We destroy the crystal. We're one step closer. This is why I say we do not spring our trap yet. To spring our trap now would be futile. It would shatter the heart at its best. What trap? You really have not talked to him at all? I haven't. Not the amulet. What about him? I used it finally. When you used it? Yes. Uh, let's see what was happening. Oh, right. Okay, okay I have no time for this. You talk here all you want. Go back in your room. Meet me. One o'clock. Cellar. Yes, you can find it. It's on the map. I put an X. Yes, I see it. Thank you, Bob. Good. Good. By God. Get me away. Downstairs. What was I saying? Uh, I yes. don't know. <coughs> I had to use the amulet. To do what? Strahd was going to let Anna kill me. What? What does that even mean? What do you, what do, you do to do this? She wouldn't bite you. She what did bite me. Do I still have a bite mark? Yeah. You want to see them? They're right there. That's hers. Shroud was just watching you while I was protecting Lenore after she lost her life. You want to tell me he's a great guy? Why, why would he do that? What would they, what, why? What reason would he have? I'm not saying Anna was in full control of me. There has to be some, some reason behind Anyway, the amulet springs a powerful light off of it. That really? Strahd does not like thunder. He's very fond of very much. Oh, so much for the sun, perhaps. Quite. Ooh. That's unique. Uh, so you see why I'm very cautious around him. I have my reasons to not trust him. You may like him. I I understand why you're interested in all the knowledge you can get, but I have my reasons too. No, no, I, I can understand that reasoning. Don't get me wrong. Oh, oh here you go. Here, here. mine's empty too. Oh. <laughs> mine's empty too. Loser. Oh, thank you. Not because of the is really good. Meanwhile, have the two of you stepped into your room? No. Yeah, I 
Yeah, we were in our yeah. room. I you just were right outside. I s you were right outside the room in the hallway, leading down the stairs. I'm going to sit on this. I'm going to go to the library. <laughs> <laughs> There's a map for you. Beautiful eyes. You are currently here in this room. Has he gone back up to the bedroom? Has he gone to the bedroom? Or has he started walking up there? It's like you're in this room. <laughs> uh, mm, Who's he? Oh, no. Amadeus. Amadeus. Uh, you tell me. Amadeus, what are you doing? So we so we left. I'm going to the, I'm going to the library. You're going to the room. We left. I'm gonna stay in my room for now. Okay. Okay. So he does go to his room because we're not in the room yeah. right now. So I'm going to the room. Okay. Gotcha. As soon as he runs the corner, I'd like to go back to the dining hall. Okay. Meanwhile, Anna Lee, you found yourself walking up these stairs, and suddenly you were greeted by strong voices somewhere up in the halls. You heard them and you didn't recognize them at first, and then you did. It was Amadeus and Laverne arguing. You listen for a moment, they're talking to a third person. As you stand there just outside your door, of a plan. Suddenly when you hear Rictavio say bye and footsteps proceed, you enter your room. Or you stay in the hall. Right? He's coming down the stairs towards you. Steps go closer and closer and closer. And then suddenly they stop. Until they take one, two more. He appears around the corner. Tatiana. away. Here I go. Hatching down this hall. Is he going my way? <laughs> he goes trying to, sque to squeeze past you. No, I'm going to go right in front of him. <laughs> Jesus, <God. laughs> I'm, excuse me, I'm trying to push past you. No. Will you call your friend? Friend? <clears throat> your lover. No? Will you call him? Why? Well, that is the inevitable outcome, yes. It's either we stand here for all eternity or you alert strong. No. Then excuse me, I'm missing the third option. That my spear. Uh, you left it in your room. What do I have on me? You were wearing a dress. You have anything that you would have on you. Does this charm do anything? Uh, not that you've seen. I doubt it would do anything if 
squeezes like I'm gonna push him against the wall. You do? As he's squeezing yeah. rescue? Okay. Yeah. Uh roll for strength. I love this. This is awesome. <laughs> oh. What'd you get? Eight. <laughs> That's still fourteen because you have plus six. Eight? Right? Oh yeah. Wait, no. Here's a plus five. Well, he has plus I have eight. Okay. But I have another I'm gonna have another roll, so I'm doing it again. <laughs> you are. Oh, what? You got a inspiration point? No. Oh, what? Uh, I just have an action charge. Oh, okay. Go for it. Yeah. Oh. Bonus action. That okay. Right. Okay, that's better. 15. Okay. Uh, the first time is you kind of press him against the wall. He kind of takes your hand and blocks it sort of as, as your the bulk of your force is then pressed against the stone there. But you go and reach for him with your other hand. How would you grab him? I'm going to put my forearm right up into his throat. Oh. He just kind of... Ow. Lowers his glasses so he can see you. Oh, that's nice. Would you care? Possibly. I'm aged quite nicely. Mm, you're tempting me. I'm I just might. Tired. Well. Ooh. Something about that. <laughs> He kind of pulls against you. He's going to try and break free from you. Do you let him, or do you? I have. A, I almost am like tempted to do this for some reason. I feel like the blood of this is just so much better. <coughs> yeah. Sorry, am I coming down the stairs at this point? Because that's where I was going to go back to the dining room. Oh, yeah. You hear a scuffle, and you hear that kind of. I'd like to go down and see what it is. Okay. You come stepping down the stairs. Perfect you hear him. Like this. <laughs> you hear him coming. Um, roll for strength. Okay. Twenty. Nat oh. twenty. Oh. He. Uh, you. You catch harder. him trying to kind of slide past you. And he goes. Ah. Oh. He like hears you coming and just. I hope so. You come into this castle, and I know you do not plan. Okay, yeah, you come in, you see this. What do you do? What the heck? Relearn, are you in any part a part of his plan? Oh, I, get this. I trust you. I'm going to message her. Okay. I know about this plan. I think it does three months it happened. That's an idea. I step back. Releasing. Uh, yeah, he just kind of walks down the hallway. Okay, so then I so, yeah. I have, we both have our own copy now, right? Or is it just no, it's just the one. Oh, shoot. Okay. Fair enough. I'm going to say, watch your back, Van Richten. Just walks away. Yeah. He just kind of like, looks you back at you. Possibly. We don't see what we're doing. Just so he continues down the hall. I continue the message. Yeah. My plan is to blow up the room. Alcohol reacts quite nicely to fire, so 
when I, because I'm just, I want to whisper. I'm going to talk loud, but this oh, right. yeah, so you don't here. Message, I just don't want to uh, not put up here. Okay. I want to say, I'm going to start soon. He, I am guessing he wants to take me out somewhere. He wants to show me something. Can I meet him with you? I know it's not going to be a part of whatever he has for you, but I know. No, come. Like, I'm going to tell him too. I need to change for a second. <coughs> no, so, of course, yes. I need to just change for a second. Uh, yeah. You walk into that room. Uh, it's the dining hall, and then the lounge. It's filled with books <laughs> all oh, I around. Think, I, so I know that. So I say, yeah. come in. There's a lounge with books. You can come in. Oh, excellent. I'd love to. So I, I walk in and you do. Inside, you begin just to marvel at the mass of tomes there. You search through them, knowing many of them by name, and many more representations of magic that you've never even heard of. You spend some time there. searching through many of the books. Pick a number between one and ten. Eight. You learn protection from energy. For the duration of the willing creature you touch has resistance to one damage type of your choice acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder. And you do not need to uh, use a uh, spell slot for that. So, is this a spell scroll? Or? No, it is a book. Sorry, not a spell slot. You don't need to prepare it. Oh, so it counts as a free one. <laughs> <coughs> so, you continue to just flip through that book. You see it's annotated by a genius. His magical symbols and lines that he's drawn, the connections he's made, all of them seem to just make complete sense. As you finger through this book, you're quickly able to understand and grasp the concept of it. You, with the help of Belle in the other room, uh, begin to dress yourself in some of the warmer clothes. It's a similar gown, purples, with another longer fur coat. Um, long white gloves with some of your fingers. And when you come back into the other room, you see or learn that it is you reading. yourself at the dining hall, not what it was, cold and dark, empty.
step through the doors into the long hall lined with sculptures, marble knights. Proceed, to proceed towards the chapel, and there it too, completely unlit except for the moonlight that streams in through the slats of wood and the broken stained glass. You know what's there? venture back out to the courtyard um, there in the night. The rains come, clouds roiling overhead, the mist that sweeps through and over the battlements. You can see in the moonlight that pierces through some of the clouds, uh, long tendrils, rays of light come streaming down into that courtyard. But it's empty. Can I see where the horse is in the deck? Like where the yeah, you remember where goes? the <coughs> yeah. you remember where the carriage was. You are standing out here, and you walk yeah around this direction. So you come to a large gate, and there the portcullis is drawn. But you do see a gatehouse at the far end. You return to your room and you go to Amadeus. Amadeus, you are. What are you doing in your room? Just reading the map. Sure. If you try and decipher the layout of this map, you realize. Go ahead and roll for. Let's just roll intelligence. You are utterly confused by the map. <laughs> well, that is, uh, <laughs> Nothing is makes sense. Good. The kitchen yeah, seems to be seven rooms and two hallways away from the dining room. The stairs don't have entrances or exits at each level. Some of them you have to go so low into the castle before you can enter the heights of the towers, and others don't seem to have any entrance at all. And yet there are so many hallways that have no real doors that you're certain you're missing something. Perhaps not everything is marked on the map. You're unsure. But as you sit there pondering it, you hear a rapping on your chamber door. There you are. There. enters the room. Is there something you want to talk to me about? There is, in fact. Might I say? Oh, absolutely. It's your place. <laughs> but it is your room. <laughs> Feel free to go. He goes and takes a seat over by your table. Really? Yeah, that's 
Yes. 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 <laughs> the uh, <laughs> motions for you to take a seat. So there's a game set up before you. And there's one of the pieces. Do I know what the game is? Uh, it's, it's chess. chess. <laughs> okay. I just want to make sure that was inaccurate. Sure, it's <laughs> chess. Yes. Do you, you play? You know, I would say I did not have time, but... No, perhaps I've just lost interest. Do you? Not very much, no. I wouldn't say I'm very good. I used to play a different game of sorts. Ones with knights and with pawns. What are they called? War. You like? Yes, it was quite the game. Tell me, Amadeus. Is it that your heart desires? Peace. 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 And safety. For one's family. Yes. I very much wish the same. That too is my heart's desire. weapon that was used against that purpose. Did you bring it? I can't say I did. That is fine. Very well. Can I ask you a question? Certainly. It is a difficult question to answer without seeming so cruel or benign. I'm still interested in you. As I said, my sole motive is that of the protection of what is mine, my family. Tatiana. She is strong now, but was not always. I have lived many a lifetime and to watch that same light be snuffed out of this world, only to have it brought back and crushed again. And the machine that is dead. That is why I had hoped you'd bring it. Do you want it? Is that what you're after? It is not so much that I want what you possess, but I was hoping that it would be a measure of trust we might have. If anything, think of it as a dowry. Yes, that was unfortunate. You kind of forced my hand. Very well, I understand your reason. Well, I would love to make a deal with you. Would you? Yes. Do tell.
Tell me this. Are you a believer in the morning world? Do you worship fervently? I would say I do. I would say that is right. Many have wasted their lives away in service to a being that holds no power here. His reach is but as far as your own holding has done you. My reach from this castle is long and far. I would be inclined to propose the same bargain. You disarm yourself of this trinket of the morning world. And I too would disarm myself. And why should I trust you? I can't. <laughs> because we share the same lot. He takes forth a box carved of wood and stained, polished black. It's about a meter long, the length of a sword he would keep beneath his cloak. As he draws it forth, he sets it there at the edge of the table with a silver latch. You keep your family safe. My reach is farther than that of the Mardikov family. That is the least as far as it goes. Then, my boy, what have you to fear? I just caution him. What? He stands. <laughs> there is <laughs> one other thing. you to know my offer stands regardless of your answer. I am, after all, at my most, a nobleman, and my word is my bond. But I come here not seeking some trinket. I come here hoping to find peace. Or I'd like to ask you a question. And though I do not require your answer, it would behoove me to have it all the same. I intend to marry your sister. you for your blessing on this marriage. You have it. You are yours. And it is my will that you marry our lady. My boy, do not think she is dying. For she was never alive. Not since some 400 years. Sleep well, Amadeus. I will try. Spurgeon. <laughs> I will do it. 
If he leaves you there, you never know. And we'll now go <laughs> for the two of you. She died. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that reminds me, I really have to pee too. <laughs> we go now to the two of you. <clears throat> sitting in the lounge. I feel like he cannot be dead. Strong. As great and powerful as he is, I do believe that everyone can. task? I do not think it would be, though. I believe it would be a very difficult thing to do. Fenris is very powerful, yes? Do you know? I don't know his actual strength, but I assume he would be fairly powerful if he did gather all the information through the book that I have of his. And his knowledge, many though, of his it. knowledge. What about magic? Do you have magic? He has some semblance of magic. I saw him disguise himself while we were in the tower. Mm, but and he didn't cast anything, it. did he? Mm. Interesting. Keep I thinking don't, about it. I don't know his extent. I'm sure he has shorter than us, but I guess we'll see. You sit there for some time before you hear. Strahd stands there, a smile across his face. He drew those closed fists. Thank you. Would you mind coming in for a minute? Of course. Did I hear voices? We learn, sir, of course. Ah, we learn. Good evening. Good evening. Strahd. Von Ressing is in the castle. If you do not already know. <laughs> is he? Yes. I ran into him in the hallway and had a bit of a conversation, I should say. Well. I'll have it taken care of. previous land. It is unfortunate. It does sound I don't I don't know enough about it, but apparently there are some crystal and energy powers and that is the plan. He's going after it. He's going after your life, but and who knows if he knows we know this and would tell you. It I don't it could be a trap as well in the one for that one, who knows? <laughs> but this is your castle. Well, that is unfortunate. But we shan't let it ruin this night. Give me but a moment. Thank you. I will retire. <clears throat> In the meantime, would you like to do anything? Just hang out, talk. <laughs> yeah. He's reading probably on his coffee. Yeah. <laughs> You're just talking. <laughs> I'm reading. Yeah. Just, I, <laughs> You're just talking like you're He's gone not for very long. Around 15 minutes pass before you hear again. Okay. Open it. It will not be a problem. Was there anything else? I was only hoping that a 
system anyway. I could with the flying feather thing, but if, if it's been taken care of, I think you'd be treated differently. Rohanim. Is it anything swift in his handiwork? I'm sure he will have it covered. I see you've seen my study. Would you care to use my library? I would love that, actually. Certainly. I will send Cyrus for you. He will show you to the room. Thank you very much. Great. I appreciate it. And I appreciate your loyalty. against those who would wish me harm. That is why the amulet did not affect me so. That night, it was not cast in my direction, and yet it would have forced me the way it did. Not of my own volition, of course, but it is that of our nature to fear the light. One day I would hope to construct something of a sort for you. Perhaps we can get here in the Silver Tower. How long have you been here? Do you remember? Years and years. But I have perfected the art. absorb it into itself and only when it could not take any more it would shatter and that is when I would feel such pain come there is much more to show he goes and he leads you down this long winding staircase down and down and down lower and lower until you finally come 
to this main floor, and you figure yourself to be at the ground floor. When? It takes you there, and you proceed down a corridor into a small hall. It leads you across, and you exit from a passageway that he presses his thumb into. The door clicks, and the wall springs open, and you find yourself now in the chapel. He leads you then across this chapel, down the stairs as you've been before. <laughs> and with that, we're going to cross back over to Amadeus. It's your turn. No, I don't do all those. Fly away. Why do you need to use that mask one more time? That's truly not. It's going back to Amazon anyway. <laughs> Alright, you sit there in your room. Strahd had left you some time ago. with him. He didn't need to open it for you to know its contents. He disarmed himself. The way he says that with such credibility as he holds a piece of your broken wife there beneath his jacket. stare there blankly at that map, it's still befuddling you. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like this. Uh, <laughs> Wait, it is upside down? Oh! <laughs> uh, what do you do? I'm going to leave. How so? Is there a window? There is. Leaded glass, three windows are against one wall. If I fly back, do I know where the closet is? Is it my way back to the door? Do you know the general direction? I think I'm going to fly back to the office. You... I'm going to leave a note for as well. And leave what? I'll just leave a note. Oh, okay. What was your name? Strata request back to two blocks. I'm <laughs> dead. <laughs> um, love you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Uh, heading back to the lobby. Be back. do get the notion that this was probably just an overnight thing. They're probably not going to be here. It's not all of us. Well, at least we're learning. Well, I figured they were not going to be here, but Strahd. Oh, okay. This is all I could. So, sorry, is the note for Strahd? Yes. Okay. So what is I'm sure he knows, but I figured out the Where's the note for me? You're not his best friend anymore. I guess I'm going to look at still love you, I guess. Yeah, I'm kind of new best friend. Yeah, you hear it. Uh, da, 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 like, middle finger. I guess you should have left him the one for us. <laughs> Alright, so what does your note say? <coughs> uh, like, it just says, uh, leave me for a lobby when you're back in the day. Okay. To discuss. Gotcha. Yes. With that, you spring open that door. Well, not door, that window. Um, and you fly out across the rooftops, passing over large stone gargoyles. Their faces, no, they almost seem to turn and look up at you. Their wings stretch. You turn forward again to see where you're going, the winds battering you back and forth in the storm. And then you glance again, and one of them is gone. You're not sure where it went. You're sure it was there on the crest of the rooftop. You continue to fly out over the Spalish woods towards the lobby. We'll now go to the winner. Dang or dank? Dang. 
<laughs> Dang. Yeah. Sick. <laughs> Learn after a moment. You sit there reading a book for maybe another hour or two, browsing through fascinating histories of magic. Some tales that you can't quite understand, for they don't seem to be linear. When suddenly, the door opens and looks. Ah, sir. Oh, hello. I have come to take you to the library, sir. Oh, yes, that would be excellent. Thank you. What if this is? Yeah. Come! This Bye. way. Lead the way? He goes shuffling, leads you down the stairs, winding, 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 until you find yourself finally coming to the main floor. He leads you out across the main entrance and finally up the set of stairs that wind come there to a great throne room. You look out across it, it's black polished floors and a chair in the middle turned the opposite direction. You pass across and into a room where you find what looks like a study. A large wooden table is covered in books, all of them stacked high, some of them spread wide open, pages on pages laid over each other, some are loose leaf papers that are stuffed, others sets of scrolls that are all placed in a potter's plant, uh, planter's pot, <laughs> um, and yet there are still many more um, bookcases filled with books. This, sir, is the study. It's Lord Strahd's library. Incredible. Yes. Why? Quite credible. Yes. Is there anything I could help you find? I don't even know what to look for, necessarily. Um, oh, well, Strunt told me you would look for books, so yes, I brought you here. I thank you very much. Uh, there is, um, there is a book. I don't, I don't know if you'd be able to find it, and if not, it's totally okay. Um, I, um, a book, sir. Yes, it, it is a book. Um. I must confess, I don't read well, sir. And that's totally okay, I don't even have a title. It's just the look of the book. Wow. The look of the book that rhymed. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, that is too you good. You are quite right oh, literate, right sir. Yeah, yeah, Your turn's yeah, a phrase. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Sorry. It is so good. Uh, um, <laughs> quite well, sir. Uh, thank you. I greatly appreciate that. Um, a book, sir. I'm looking for a book. Yes, yes. Apologies. Um, it look, can I, I just want, I wanted to see if you can find the book that I've seen in the vision, but I can't remember the exact Oh, uh, yeah. It's a large tome. Looks to be somewhat leather bound, but of a very pale leather. Um, it has a sigil on it, that of a raven. You recognize it from the banners here in the throne room to be that the symbol of Strahd von Sandwich. I described that book to him. If, if you could find that. Oh, um, there's, there's a whole lot of books here, so I, why this book? Perhaps that would help me understand where it would be located. I, I have no idea where it would be located. It's one that I saw in a, in a dream, really. It's purpose, sir. I don't even know that. I'm just curious because I, again, uh, I saw it in a dream. I would like to see it in person now. I, 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 I don't 
don't believe I can help much with this description, sir. That completely fair. Um, I, I can look around and try and find it. Yes, Look please. at the many books. Please. I appreciate you taking me. I will check in on you soon. I have That'd lit be great. these small lanterns here, sir. Do mind the books. They are quite old. Of course, yes. And that page is thin. I have dealt with many a book. I, I will be very, very careful with that. Of course, sir, of course. I will be back shortly. Excellent. Thank you again. Yes. Okay. You're left there in that room with I'd, a bunch of books. I'd like to search for that book exclusively. Go ahead and roll for investigation. That was so funny. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that was so good. Uh, what am I rolling again? Yeah, investigation. Okay. Okay. <coughs> so four. I'd like to use chronal shift. Yeah. Roll. Roll okay. a one. Are you Go gonna? Okay. It's for books. So I'm sure it's for books. You have a lot of time. You're attacking books. You can't do that. Hey, uh, seventeen. Nice. Okay. You search. How long are you willing to search? As long as it takes. You search. Four hours. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing matches close to that description. Yeah. And with that, we're going to go to Brandon. Tatiana. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you walk down these stairs. The spiral is much larger and grandiose. You continue in this great spiral, lower, lower, across the hall, and here in the chapel, you proceed this tower, where you wind lower and lower still. You pass another floor before finally arriving here. You wind down that turret until you come to a large open catacomb. You enter through that stair. Proceeding down the hall as you pass many a large marked graves. You read the names as you pass one of them, Saint Markovia. Markovia, that's the abbey that you visited in Kresk. Strahd, walking there beside you, notices you looking a bit for one. Says, uh, his word was found. Artemis. Strahd pauses there with you. Beautiful night. Would you think you will rest here for all eternity? Mm. <laughs> and their bodies in the chapel. For those that would be found. Mm. For some. They live on in body but not in mind. Only the great are encapsulated here in time. You pass another. Not sure. Why? Ah. Yes. Two hundred years ago. Let's continue. That one was that for us? It was. Oh, okay. But you don't really have much of a memory of that one. Oh, okay. Because you're probably drunk now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. You pass another Katrina. Bride. Bride. Serpent. Serpent. 
first counselor to the king, Pharaoh Van Sarraj. And finally, we come to one marked with a horse. A fresco in the black that reads Eucephalus. Yeah. May the flowers grow ever brighter where he trod. You're a horse. Hmm. My horse. Is he Dexter? Or is he... <laughs> is he Hydra? Touch his stone. Okay, if the wing is out, touch it. You feel its warmth? These mists brought not just travelers, such as you and your brother, and your friend. There have been many more folk from all across these worlds that are ensnared by the powers that be. Some of them, I will confess, brought here by the Vistani. It's so dull that only the Barovians and souls here recycle. <laughs> you get bored. Easily, yes. This is one of my prized possessions. A nightmare from the Nine Hells. The heat you can feel it. It nearly burns, and yet there's something about it in its life, and it's undead. It's gone. You call him forth now? He puts his hand there and rests it on the stone until it splits rolling billows of steam and sulfur pour from it. Clouds spill out across the floors. And the stone crumbles, splitting into dust. You stare into the blackness of the abyss until a fire erupts somewhere deep within. Breath. And the horse, as it neighs, this violent <laughs> it comes forward, trotting. <laughs> Sparks fly from its hoofs. As it steps forward out of the grave. Its skin, charcoal black, seems to emit some sort of strange light. As he offers you a hand, Jelen, there he helps you walk up onto the horse and takes behind you. Feel his warmth. He takes your hand and presses it there against its mane. The fire along it that goes out, splintering into mist and fog and sputters. The smoke of it billows out, and the whole horse, you feel it ripple, its muscles tense and writhing underneath you as it trods forward. Hold on. Suddenly it breaks out into a hard sprint as it takes straight forward the stairwell. It then takes a hard right through the catacombs. You see them rushing by pillars like trees until it finds another tower and enters a main column, a chimney stack begins to sprint upward, spinning round and round its feet, clashing with 
with stones and then treading on nothing but air as it soars straight up through this chimney out to the night and it bursts out of the top of the tower high above the rest of the walled castle you soar then above the rooftops out through the clouds the rain pelts you and sprays until suddenly the mist cool and calm rushes past in a flood of water and you rise up above the clouds there you continue to ride far off to that horizon where black and space and stars are light he almost has to yell raising his voice would you care to steer take to your command as you place your hands there on its neck, grabbing at its mane. You almost seem to tug at some strange fibers. Uh, the horse takes to you. It goes and bends and then suddenly it plummets down through the night. You see lights off in the distance. The castle casting a shadow now through the moon. Uh, the moon piercing through the fog and it casts it down over a small village, Barovia. There the horse plummets and suddenly takes to the street. <laughs> you see a woman sort of move off to the side. It's like, oh my god. She runs off inside and another man takes another drink of wine and heads back inside the tavern, the Blood on the Vine Tavern, one of the first places that you visited in Barovia. We are here. <laughs> Would you care for a drink? Would I be full from dinner, though? Could be drink at dinner. <laughs> there is... <laughs> sure. So we but... There's also the undying thirst that comes with your condition. Okay. <clears throat> Are you thirsty as well? I'm only wishing to entertain. These are good folk here. They stun me on this place. Hmm. Does one first place to please you? Do they thank you? Yes. Good. One was. You remember her. One. And you know. All Barovians are so dull. He goes and swings down off the horse. Will you go? Yeah. How did you come to have such a seat? You never told me this story. You know, I found him in the lake of all places. I was resting there with fishermen after his passing I spotted something there underneath the water boiling it seemed to spring from the lake drowning itself in the waters to jump straight out of hell into this land. I cannot say what it means, but part of me wants to think it is a poem, a song. That this place, be it respite or somewhere harsher than even hell, I cannot say. But I pulled the horse from the lake and He has been loyal to me. Though I must be careful, for it seems he is taking a liking to you. 
<laughs> he strokes his mane. Of course. I stroke it too. <laughs> yeah, looks back and he's kind of. <laughs> He goes and puts its head down. You notice the fire that spits from its mouth with every breath. It warbles the air in its heat, and it warms you from the night. There's something strange in it. It's so hot, you feel as if if, if you were but mortal, it might burn you. But there's something in the intensity of it all that it's some sort of feeling. Perhaps everything since you've developed this condition seems dull compared to the contrivances of your life before. Strug leads you then towards the tavern. Is, does this make me stronger? Is that? To make you stronger. Drinking. You know? It helps, yes. But tonight is not a night for self improvement. This is a night to revel. Trust me, I have something here to show you. We will not stay long. If you do not want to drink, you do not want to come here. Let's go. He leads you inside. There he looks around a moment. Find Vistana. How are you this evening? My lord, I'm quite well. You honor us with your visit. You lady honor me with your hospitality. It is quite late, I realize, but you are short a few patrons, no? Is there someone that you're looking for, my lord? Uh, the Burgomaster, yes. Where is he? My lord, I'm afraid that you are but a few weeks late. I believe it was the last month he passed away. I'm sorry. I do not mean Kolyan, but I do mean his son. Ismark the Lesser. That is what they call him, yes? Oh yes, my lord, you, he was here not very long ago, but I'm afraid he already has left. So I will. He is. Good. We shall stay here very long as well. This man is quite interesting. You mentioned Irina. This is her brother. He would have been the burgomaster of this village, but... He ran away. He did, some time ago. Was she right? Where was he when he was walking? <laughs> he comes and goes. This is what I would show you. Shall we take a stroll through these woods? Yes. Perhaps together we find him. He leads you off through the street, no walls, as it bleeds out into the plains, and then off towards the woods, leading towards the great castle. But with that, we're going to go to Lama Deus. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> be careful. I'm pretty sure Gargoyle is chasing him. Yeah. Or just watching. Probably, it's probably yeah. You soar through the sky towards the Lockheed. When eventually you see it, the walled city. You fly for maybe an hour and a half. You lower down towards the city. It's in much the same state that you found it the other night. Um, it's quite early in the morning now. So we're gonna make it two. I'm gonna turn back into here and talk to this guy. As you drop down on the street, the gate is closed as it is night. But 
Um, you would, yes, yeah. You do, you go up to it, uh, and as you do, actually, you see one of the guards, uh, Caleb, is there. Another day, is that you? Uh, yes, it is. What are you doing out at night? It's out for a little stroll. Clearly, a little stroll. Come on. Of course, sir. How are things going? Quite well. Uh, when you leave the gates open, there ain't much to do, really. Just keep an eye on the window every now and then. Yes, sir. Anyway, uh, keep doing what you're doing. Good night, sir. Your back is very warm. <laughs> um, what do you do? Yeah. I'm going to go uh, move water in. What time is it? Two. Two. Oh, come on. Blue water. <coughs> you walk towards the Blue Water Inn, and eventually you come to that door. All the lights are off inside. later, down comes Danica. <laughs> ah, sorry to wake you again. Yeah. Sorry, Danica. Back. Uh, is Lenore sleeping? She is. Oh, it's quite late. I, I know. I believe. Well, I'm glad you made it back safely. How was it? He does. So that was his purpose then, and for what? Safety? Yes. Could he not give you safety without you giving him any? I tried. But it seems that it was a deal breaker. in the second to the right. Lenore, she's sort of curled up the way she's sleeping, her knees near to her chest. She faces away from you towards the window. Probably next to her. You do so. Yes. 
lies there in the silence. And eventually, she finally turns onto her back and you see her look over to you just out of the corner of her eye. What happened? safety. At least that's what he says. Did you come out? Yeah, you had your mind. You did. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. I totally forgot about that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> tears. They escape and run down her cheek. Billy wipes them away. goes long and you sit there for some time and eventually you find yourself wary with all the events swimming in your head the map that you still have tucked away you think of that cursed place and it slowly drifts into your dreams and with that we'll go Verlern, you have torn through these books. If the room was a mess before, it's more of a mess now. As you started tossing books aside, none of them right. You think you've been through most of the books here. You can't find anything to match that description. Or 
a book? Really, a book? I thought you just found your book. I did find my book. So whose book? I don't know whose book. I don't even know what book it is. Strahd's book. It could be. I don't know what it is, though. Then why do you need it? Tatiana is here. You know this, yes? Yes. Good. <laughs> because I were not an idiot. I were an idiot. It might look that you were working with her. traveled with this girl for some time. We arrive at Castle Ravenloft. And now what? We have dinner with the bride and her groom. What's the plan, my lad? I ignore him. For a book. Here. Yes. We need this book. Where did I find it? Please let me know. I'm inclined to help you. It only means to leave this place sooner. And I don't mean to help me look. <laughs> it has the raven symbol on it. And how have you seen this before? In, in a dream. It, I don't even know if it's really real. And it was here in this library? Yes. Where? <laughs> it was right here on the study, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Recount the dream. Now a book would make sense to be in the library, but if you're not looking for a book that you saw in the library, then why are we in the bloody library? Fair enough. But shall we take a trip then to the correct tower? Lead on. Do I remember anything about the map? Roll. <laughs> what do you want me to roll for that? Intelligence. Intelligence. Oh, that's my best one. That's, that's good. Oh, 18, baby. Nice. How much of that map do I remember? What you remember, <laughs> the towers are strange from reading it. Your tower got you up most of the way. It led you up to the secondary tower, not the high. You remember seeing a vision of the high tower where Strahd was writing in some book and he closed it. Somewhere with dizzying heights where the stones would come alive. You don't know you remember the stairwells led all the way down to the basement. What 
time is it? It is roughly yeah, around the wash. two, oh, three, uh, three, oh, pull up. You times further, 4 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is four. <laughs> yeah, it matched up this time. Uh, so I went two more hours with him. Yeah. How long do you, would I expect it to take me to walk all the way down the stairs? Um, like all the way down. You, as far you as don't know. Down. You haven't been all the way down. I'd like to just start walking all the way down to see if I can find one of okay. the other bombs. You are currently in the throne room. No, I want to take a look down. Here, there's a set of <laughs> two staircases behind you. And then there is a large door here, and this is the room that you're in. Mm -hmm. So these staircases lead back down to the main room, the entrance hall. They both lead there? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to go down from them, or op open it up and go through it and go down. You go down one of these staircases here, and it leads you down to this main room. No. You know this is the staircase you've been to. You also remember in here, there were a set of staircases, one to the right and one to the left, inside the chapel. Vladimir was active when I was going up here, so he knows about this this staircase. Yes. We didn't go all the way up though, did we? You did not know. You went up to your room and below your room, bit more. Her room. The witches, Van Ripple said, were above you. And then above that you believe was the high the turret that leads out into the night. Okay, I'll go up into the chapel room. Go to the turret of the left. I thought you were about to say the turret of the turret. Come to the chapel. Are you going this way or this way? This way. Okay. You go over to that staircase, and it actually only leads up from there. Spend some time wandering the halls, you find yourself wandering back up. This isn't right. Go back the other way. Are you sure? I mean, I saw the map, I'm pretty sure this it doesn't make sense. sense. Why go up? If we're trying to go down to go up. I mean, what if this is just the one, though? I mean, we already went down when we were up at the other tower. Fine. It leads back up. You find yourself now standing above the chapel there is a high mezzanine up here like that word apparently yeah. uh, where you, you can stand there is a set of thrones that overlook the chapel alright I guess it's this way that's what I said okay well I, I wanted to be 100% sure have you been to this castle before do you know it's ins and outs been here before, but it was long ago. This place is a maze. Come on. What kind of stuff? Uh, you wander for a bit more. Uh, you have maybe an hour before sunrise. Just... Okay. Uh, okay, I'll go to the other tower. Then. Let's go to the staircase. Mm -hmm. staircase. So that's the that one. Take a break here, or do you want to keep going? Don't you have work? <laughs> oh, you don't? I have to take tomorrow off and then work Monday instead, because tomorrow's the trip and oh, tonight. Nice. Okay. Alright, what do we want to do? Keep going. Okay. 
it takes you some time as you wander until eventually you find yourselves there. The great catacomb. Hi. The hall's still lit. Take the girl. Continue to walk through these woods, just talking. You hear them. Wolves. Oh, this. You hear these great howls. Oh, oh, the children of the night. Do you like them? Do you like the wolves? Do you hear the music that they make? It's wonderful. taste of the power you will come into. Soon you will be able to run wild with these wolves. This land and yourself will not be separated in the same way that the Vistani say. He is the ancient, he is the land, so too Eventually, you spot him 
a man with hair dirty blonde down to his shoulders. He carries with him a bottle of wine as he leans up against a tree. It continues forward in silence. See him go. He comes to these castle walls every now and again. Sometimes he gets so drunk he finds himself waking up the next day in these woods in a hollow somewhere. And as the wolves leave him alone, though, there's something poetic about this. His loss, his yearning. Follow him forward until he comes to the castle gate. And there, Strahd opens it for him. He stands back in all surprise before sprinting forward through to the courtyard. He stands there, the bottle dropping from his hand. Gertruda! Gertruda! offers you his hand, and Strahd lifts you up, rising across these turrets and then above the rooftops to where there's actually a hole splintered into the roof behind the cave. Then on a wall and <laughs> then slides open. He proceeds to show a long hallway. He waves his hand, and on the other end, it opens up. He waits there. You see him walk forward. And there's something of a hum that comes from him, as if he's singing a song in his head. Takes great joy in it. And suddenly you spot the man come running up into the throne room. Gertruda! Joy comes back to you. Wait here, no one will see us. He comes running in. Gertruda! Where are you? Suddenly a door opens. It's not. This monster, it keeps you here. I know it. Please come back with me now. I'm sorry, but I was kept here against my will. I, I came here willingly. You don't say such things. You have been trapped. You are charmed by him. You are charmed by the devil. This beast. Come with me. Come. He goes and tries to pull her. He looks down at his feet. Please stay with me. I'm sure Strahd will take you in as well. He's very kind. Though I 
only see him now and again. Clearly, she's madly in love with Strahd, and at the same time, she pulls him in close and hugs him tight before going and kissing him on the cheek. He stands there in bewilderment. Young love. and misery now. takes her signs of love. Mm. Her comfort. She comforts him. Yes, but you watch it in his face, the way he smiles at her. He thinks she wishes him to stay with her. And she thinks she can have it all. Both worlds. She's certain I will come for her. This is the finest moment of their lives. No? Too fast, but they could take. And both lead to misery. But, if the wheel of time were to stop for a moment here, and pause, then this forever is their story. Moments of love. What do you think? Shall we ease their passing? seem to know you. She walks a little closer. And there, four of you meet. It's a moment, just as he said, seems to stop all time. As you drink and the taste of it, it fills you as a drug, as wine goes to your head. You feel that same love that they felt in that moment as it swims through your veins. Suddenly when the moment is past, you find yourself no longer in this dark hallway, but walking in moonlight in a garden outside the chapel. He leads you over to a small gate, waving his hand at it, it swings open. And out 
across this path, you see a great precipice, a balcony above all of the ruins. There the clouds swim, mist, rising. And you see the lights of the village far, far below. He looks then up at the stars. wished upon a celestial body, sent a prayer to some god of the heavens. Yes, a long time ago, I think. Indeed. My dear, I will pray that you turn your gaze down to me. Cast not wishes to some far off spirit, but ask me for anything. Ask me and it will not be denied to you. Ask me for anything. Name it and it is yours. But in doing so, I'm afraid I must ask something of you. In fact, I here intend to ask everything of you. I am old. There's a time I remember you to call me elder. respect, of course, but to me it aches a pain in my heart that I cannot not stand here to bear your beauty, to bear the grace you have. And so I stand here with the namesake of my family. He holds up a ruby ring. This gemstone was my mother's Queen Ravanovia, given to her by my father, King Val. And now, my dear, I wish to give it to you. I ask you for much. stand here, and now I kneel before you, not a lord, but a man, in all damnation, I ask you, will you marry me? I'll say yes. 
What are you doing? Yes. He comes bringing you in closer, finding your finger, and places it on. <laughs> uh, and the two of you meet. Okay. It means they put it in the There. Standing on the precipice of all of Barovia, the world spins around them as the mists come in over the balcony. The learner finds himself wandering, lost in the maze of the castle. <laughs> You're just never going As dawn comes, at the briefest moment, you see orange glow on the horizon. It doesn't last long for the mists roll in and envelop you. But with that, you'll have to stop. <laughs> I couldn't think wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, do I see them? No, you're, you're still oh, traveling around the castle. Oh, wow. Here, he knows here, how to pick up. <laughs> I was going to say, 